In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a video glitch style title sequence in Premiere Pro using BCC. Hi, this is Paul, and here I am in Premiere, and let's see the pre-rendered result. Okay, so there's a lot going on here. So you can see this is the timeline that created this title. And I'm going to focus today just on the glitch portion. Uh, the title animation was all done ahead of time but I used BCC Title Studio to do it. We have more tutorials online for that product, so check those out when you get the chance. Uh, but first, let's just focus on the glitch today. So Video Glitch, that's a really cool filter. It's in the stylized category. If you just apply it onto some footage, like this title here, see some, some shaking, maybe some line distortion, and some flickering. So there's a lot of different things this filter can do. It can be a little overwhelming. If you're in a hurry, I say just go to the effects browser. And here you can check all the presets playing live and you can see which one you like. So there's a lot of very different looks this filter can generate. Um, these presets probably cover everything you would need, but I'll show you how to customize it anyway. So let's start with Jitter Skew X. We'll apply that. Here it is. So let's say you want to make some changes to this effect. Well, the fastest way to make changes is to adjust the seed parameters. So at the top of the filter, uh, first you have a global intensity, but you also have seeds. So this will randomize the settings that you already have. Very useful tool when using the filter multiple times. So what are the, all these other parameters then? Well, you have block damage, you have shift, shake, and flicker. These are what give the filter its characteristic look. If I turn them all on, it can be a little hard to tell what each one is doing. So to help with that, we have curve view. If you turn on curve view, you get a graph of each parameter and when it's happening. Okay, so let's simplify this and get rid of everything except shake. So shake is this blue line here. So it's very clear when it hits that spike, it starts shaking. So I can use this to tell when the effect should be happening and what my changes are doing. So if I change the intensity, I can see how it affects there. If I change the position, you can see how it affects the graph as a whole. It affects the timing all these things that are easier to see when you know where you're looking. Okay, so that's one way you can help navigate these parameters. Um, I also recommend looking at the help file, which goes into much more depth than I can right now and does a good job of explaining what each of these things does. Okay, so let's customize the effect I just made a little bit more. I do want to use block damage. And again, we have the graph. So how do we know if we're actually seeing it or not? Well, let me increase the size and increase the amount and increase the opacity. Okay, so if I scrub now and I still don't see anything. Oh, there we go, right there. Okay, so let's do some other changes. Let's change the apply mode to multiply, turn up the pattern complexity. This gives it like the JPEG damage look, which I think is really cool. Let's increase the intensity and the run length. All right, nice. So we have some good block damage on our text. That was the big thing I wanted to add. Shift, I was happy with. Uh, shake, I do want to change the dimensions. So I want to increase the shake Y to 20 and bring down the shake X to like three. So very different look in just a few seconds, making some very minor changes. Okay, so we have that set up there. We have all these other titles. We're going to add glitches to them too. So I'm going to do a little trick now. Now that I've got this looking how I want it, to make that larger text appear in front of itself like you saw there, like the small directed by and then the big one, it's a very basic trick. I just duplicated the text and enlarged it. It's a very straightforward way to make this change. So for this, I do have to go back into Title Studio, or I can just increase the scale here. but Going into Title Studio ensures that the resolution of the text stays nice and sharp. Okay, so now we have the text on top of itself, and that looks kind of cool, but it's better if you eliminate the underneath text for at least 
some of that time so it looks like it really popped out. And another time there. Okay. So we have the pop out text happening there with the exact same glitch we had before. Now let's randomize it and we can just change the intensity seed and the interval seed and then we get a different effect on top. Another thing we'll want to do is tone down the glitch when it's in the middle. So here I'm going to animate the glitch intensity. Just going to go forward a frame and set it to zero. It's kind of the nice thing about this effect is that sudden changes don't stand out. So I can leave that zero the whole time. And when the zoom in text happens again, it just looks normal. It's great. Okay, now between these two, first of all, let's add video glitch to this second name. I'm going to use this as the basis. So I'm just going to copy and paste that video glitch effect. And again, to randomize it, it's going to change the seed. And maybe this time I don't want the shake to go quite so much in the X and Y. So maybe just 10 in Y, maybe 5 in X. And let's increase the RGB split, though. So we get more color separation on the names. And let's also tone down that shift. Maybe bring down the shift group intensity to 25. So it makes it a little less insane. Nice. Same thing here. Copy and paste. Do the enlargement. So we have our super big text on top. And this time I'm going to leave it on top of the text here. But I'm going to remove the video glitch underneath it. Looks kind of cool that way. Okay, and a more traditional one here. And that'll be good. Okay, so that's how we have our crazy sporadic text there. Now in this transition between the two names, I'm going to use glitch again, but as a transition. And that's located in video transitions and it's called cross glitch. So just put it on there. I want the duration to be about 12 frames or so. And there it is. And with all this craziness, I forgot to add a glitch to the drop down part. So again, I'll copy and paste it. And the only difference is I'm going to take off the shake completely since it's already dropping down. You don't have to oversell that. Now at the very end, I'm going to use cross glitch again so that it disappears with the glitch as well. And when you put it on the end, it just fades to black. Okay, so we did all that on the bottom text. Now in the top one, same idea. We're just going to start with video glitch. I'm going to use a different preset. I'm going to use the extreme shift. You can see this does some cool things. I'll apply it. There it is. Now it might be a little too extreme here. So I'm going to go into that shift group again and turn the intensity of the group down to 50. And let's also add a little bit of a shake. But we don't want much, so maybe just 8 on Y. The intensity of the whole group, maybe 25. And like before, I'm going to animate this on the glitch intensity parameter here. So alternating between 0 and 50 looks pretty good. Here I can also copy and paste keyframes. And there we have quite a lot of glitching going on. Okay, now that's it for the glitch part, but to make everything else fit together a little nicer, I like to add a scanline effect. That's also in the stylized category. And scanline, I'll set up on the bigger text so you can see it. I'm gonna take the size down to one, softness down to 10, the roll RGB up to 10, and the roll speed up to 10. Now, mixed with original, we'll soften the whole thing up even more. So increase that to 65. And it just helps the text look a little bit more alive, more electronic. So that, check it out, I can just copy the whole clip. Because it's going to be the same effect on all of these, I can paste attributes. Just make sure you only select scanline when you do that. Otherwise, you'll copy the glitch and the text effect as well. 
Okay, it looks really good. On this top layer, again, because the letters are so big, to me, it looks a little weird to see big opaque letters like that. I'm gonna change the blend mode to add. And also let's add a glow. Gonna be very quick about this. Gonna do fast film glow right here. Both uh, texts are gonna get a film glow, but they're gonna get a different amount. So this top one is gonna be just a five radius. Gonna take the threshold way down to like five and bring the intensity down to 40. So again, makes it look more electronic, more digital. Everything underneath is gonna get the same glow, but this time we're gonna use an adjustment layer. And I'll show you why in a minute. Okay, so let's move this track up, put the adjustment layer like so, cut it off there. Okay, so let's put that film glow on the adjustment layer. Everything underneath gets the glow. So bring the intensity down to maybe 25. Radius is actually pretty good like that. Uh, just enough to make it stand out a little, looks good. Okay, now the reason I used an adjustment layer is because I wanna move all these titles together. Now we did a lot of cutting and a lot of layering. So an adjustment layer with a transform filter, just Premiere's default transform filter, uh, will move all the titles at once. So all I'm gonna do is create a keyframe here and move the position X about 100 pixels to the right, and that'll be it. Okay, and the very, very last thing I'm gonna do to the scene is add a background. So again, everything's gonna come up one layer, and I'm just gonna use a black video and apply a scan line to it. And again, I'm just gonna use a preset. And the one that I like is fast and fine. So now having the top title as a different apply mode makes more of a difference. You can even bring it down opacity wise a little bit. Looks good. And there it is. So thank you for watching. I've enjoyed making this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. And if you have liked it and want to see more, you can see more tutorials on our website at boriseffects.com.